Hey guys, it's Freya. Welcome back to my channel, um, or welcome to my channel if you're new. I'm sitting here with my Koya microphone. I've been using this microphone um, for my past few videos where I'm just sitting and talking because why not? Um, I never use this microphone after I bought it, so this is putting it into good use. And today we're going to be talking about concert ticket prices. Um, I decided to use the opportunity of Yoongi's concerts, Yoongi's tour, um, to talk about concert ticket prices because I'm not going to be making a tips and tricks video. I talked about it in my Yoongi's going on tour video that I'm not doing that uh, just because I think I've beaten it like too far. I've said enough. Um, I'll link my Mott's tour tips and tricks video, RIP to that tour, we miss her. Um, and also my PTD Vegas uh, tips and tricks video. I didn't make one for PTD LA, I just filmed me ticketing, um, if you're interested in that, but I'll link it down below and you can watch those. There's nothing that I haven't already said and there's a million and one ticketing videos available to you online on YouTube and TikTok. And so I am not gonna beat it more. I'm not gonna put in any more of my two cents because I don't think I could bring any more to the table. Um, a lot of the times it just comes down to luck. So I do wish everybody luck ticketing. I wish myself luck as well, but um, I'm not gonna make like a tips and tricks video. Um, I just wanted to make a cost of concerts video, which I did before the Yoongi one. Um, I started my series. Um, I talked about in that video that I'm starting a series of me talking about concerts, concert culture, like all the things that go into it. And I made that first video and Yoongi announced tour. So this is a way for me to talk about both. Um, because a lot of people are worried about Yoongi prices. We still don't know to this day. I don't think we'll know until sale day how much those prices are going to be. Um, but at the same time, um, a lot of people have talked about just the prices of concerts in general. It's been such a big discourse on the internet, um, no matter what platform you're on, just because it has risen so, so much. So as we get into it, the first thing that I will mention is that I think, in my personal opinion, money is subjective because what's a lot to one person is not to another. Like you could have two people next to each other and five dollars is chump change to one of them and five dollars is life changing to the other one like it just really depends on your situation so i don't know what a margin for cheap and not cheap would be for me personally this is my personal like feelings and opinions on it um it really depends on the artists it's kind of like small artists versus big artists in the um sense of like how famous they are um the way that i kind of gauge it um like a good way for me to gauge it is based on two of my favorite bands muna is a band that i love with all my heart one of my favorite brands of all time and they're kind of smaller they're starting to gain tra traction they are opening for taylor swift which is a huge deal but i have followed them around for the last six years i have seen them for free and the cheapest ticket I paid for was like $12. Like I have seen them in rooms with like 10 other people and um, they are pretty small still, even though they are on the rise. I'm so proud of them by the way, but um, they are on the rise, but their tickets are like $50. And that's already a lot for me. Like I know they're, they're getting bigger and bigger, but when I, um, bought multiple tickets for the tour that they're having this summer when I was like $50 that's a lot but um, of course I paid it but that's like a pretty good price for how big they are um, their venues are a few thousand uh, they are a smaller van a band um, they are in like general admission standing venues things like that it's $50 it's really simple. Um, I bought like multiple tickets to multiple shows and that's how much they average. And I think that's reasonable. It's very reasonable. And then uh, for someone like BTS, which is another favorite band of mine, there is just so much more money 
because they're a bigger band, right? And so for me, $350 sounds like a very reasonable price to see BTS, but that is like more than like triple, not even, that's like so much more than how much I would pay to see Muna, right? If you told me I had to pay $350 to see Muna, I'd be like, you're out of your goddamn mind. But if you told me $350 to see BTS, I'm like, that's pretty good, you know? Um, in my opinion as well, we'll talk about like in arenas and stadiums, nosebleeds shouldn't be like more than 150 If you're at the very tippy top of the venue, um, I don't think that's as worth it. But at the same time, some people love nosebleeds. I don't quite love nosebleeds. I like to be closer. Um, I will sit in nosebleed if I have to, but like, um, I like being closer more. So for me, it's not as worth it. So it really depends on you what's worth it to you and what's not. Um, I will say this video is more focused on mainstream artists. This video is focused on artists that is bigger, artists that are going to like arenas and stadiums and stuff, and um, also mainly K-pop. We'll talk about K-pop versus non-K-pop right now. So K-pop is very expensive. It's just expensive in general. Non-K-pop is expensive for nothing, which is, how do I explain that? Like Beyonce tickets are like a thousand dollars and what do you get with it? I don't know what the Beyonce VIPs or the whatever have, but I don't think it has much. You might get like a merch pack or something, but they are like a thousand dollars, you know? Um, K-pop prices are crazy as well. I do think it's crazy. I think smaller k-pop groups even like is more expensive than like small bands that you can see at the same venues um that aren't k-pop but k-pop prices are crazy already and then you add all the packages that they have a lot of k-pop groups do vip packages q a sound checks meet and greets high touches you name it it exists and it makes the ticket more expensive however i do think that is more worth it than paying a thousand dollars just to be close personally to me um but i do love those artists too like western artists that put on shows like i wasn't able last year to see bad bunny because it was so expensive and it wasn't worth it to me i wanted to buy the ticket but i was like why am i paying eight hundred dollars to be at the very back of the floor to me that was a lot I really wanted to go to see Beyonce and I also really wanted to take my mom to see Beyonce and I was like, I'll just get a nosebleed. It'll probably be like $200. Why was it like $300 before fees? It didn't make any sense to me, but that's how I feel about ticket prices, you know? And so the best way to put this, sorry for the moment of silence, but I'm really about to get into this. Every single issue with ticket prices though, leads to capitalism and i will step out of my soapbox i won't dive into capitalism and my opinions on it and stuff because i don't know if you guys know i read a lot and i also like i read a lot of books and i also am very into literature i'm also very into um current events and politics and things like that but um and i'm also really i just like i'm really big in like academia like just understanding a lot of things and so I could talk for hours about capitalism but I won't but I do want to mention that capitalism makes monopolies possible capitalism leads to these big corporate businesses being able to monopolize things Ticketmaster which is the number one leading ticket selling entity merged with Live Nation and VIP Nation years ago and became the biggest and they monopolize everything. And the issue with monopolies is that because they run that whole industry, they run everything to do with it, they can basically do whatever they want. That's like the issue with monopolies because you can't get that service without them. 
then they can do whatever they want because they're like, we're the only ones to give it. Like, you either do it well, how we want it or you don't get it, you know? And a great example of that is their fees. Ticketmaster fees has risen more and more since, like, they started. And now, a ticket that is, like, $90.00. You're seeing a band. Um, this actually happened to me for the 1995 last year. The ticket itself is like $85, but the fee is 70. The fees for Ticketmaster is almost the same price as the ticket because they can, because there's no one stopping them from doing that, which doesn't make sense. Like it should be like a small percentage of the ticket price, but it doesn't make sense. It literally doesn't, I don't know. Um, also, dynamic pricing is another example. They are able to fluctuate the price based on demand because they can do whatever they want because they're able to do that because who's gonna stop them? And if we don't like it, what are you guys gonna do? Not buy tickets, not see your face. So they know that. So they're gonna do whatever they want and that's the problem with monopolies and the biggest issue to me is, of course, scalpers. Scalpers are the biggest issues, in my opinion. And I'm not talking about, oh, you bought a ticket to a show, you can't go anymore, so you're going to sell it to your mutual on Twitter for face value. That's not an issue. In fact, I think you should be able to resell tickets for face value. Um, but... Ticketmaster is known to be their own scalpers. That, I think, is the main problem. Right now, Taylor Swift is um, having a lawsuit. Well, not Taylor Swift herself, but, like, there is a lawsuit regarding Taylor Swift ticketings. Um, and it is about Ticketmaster being their own scalpers. Honestly, this has been an issue for years. I'm surprised they finally did it. I think it's... I mean, Taylor Swift is a large scale tour, and so it was just such a big problem. They finally started rolling the dice on it. They started doing something about it, but it has been such a long standing issue. Honestly, there was both PTD LA and PTD Vegas was ridiculous, ridiculous. And this is, I'm talking about four dates. Of course, it's more obvious in Taylor Swift's like three month tour than four dates, but this has been a very pressing issue for a very long time. And the first time they really messed up was actually BTS. That was the first time that Ticketmaster really fucked up. And the only issue is that there wasn't gonna be a lawsuit because number one, it didn't seem as damning because it was only four dates at a time um, instead of a three month long multi-city multi-date tour um and also bts is k-pop i could go off again on another tangent about how they will never be treated the way that someone like taylor swift is treated or it's not a problem if it's them um type thing but i won't go off on that um that could be for a different video but it's been happening. The biggest issue that a Ticketmaster has had on that was BTS prior to Taylor Swift, and then it was Bad Bunny, and then it was Taylor Swift, and now it's Beyonce, which they have fixed a few things since Beyonce to Taylor Swift. I mean, since Taylor Swift to Beyonce, they have fixed a few things in that time period, but um, it's not fixed at all. Like the whole thing needs to be redone, and those are the four big pillars that has shown a lot of issues in Ticketmaster because those are like some of the biggest ticketing that has happened in the past few years since COVID. Um, but of course, if it's BTS or if it's Bad Bunny, no one is going to care because they are foreigners and they don't speak English. And nobody cares. Again, I won't go on a tangent, but um, it finally happened because it happened to a white woman, but I digress. Anyways, um, <laughs> the thing is, 
Ticketmaster is reported to recruit their own scalpers. They literally pay their own scalpers to purchase their tickets and resell it on their own site. So not only are they monopolizing the ticket sale industry, they are also monopolizing the resale industry. A great example of how people found out that something was wrong with Ticketmaster, if you guys bought tickets to PTD, um, whether it's LA or a Vegas, if you bought tickets to either one, after the Army pre-sale and after the verified fan pre-sale, there was a window of time where you could not transfer or sell your ticket. I believe it was like 13 days you couldn't sell your tickets and you couldn't transfer your tickets. There was a timer at the bottom where you should be able to press transfer or sell. If you open your Ticketmaster app and you open a ticket, at the bottom of the ticket it says transfer or sell. You can click those buttons to do those things. However, when you first buy the ticket the, uh, at the PTD shows, when you first buy the ticket, there was like a period of time you couldn't do it. There was a countdown instead to when those tickets would be available to do that. However, during that time period, when people could not sell their tickets yet, there were already resale tickets on the site. So how is it if the ARMY membership presale and the verified fan presale were really fans, if they were fans, if they were just somebody who bought a ticket, even if it was a scalper, if it was a scalper that went into their computer and bought a ticket, how is it that if it's not available to any of the people that bought normally, to transfer or sell, how are there resale tickets already on the Ticketmaster website where you have to press that sell button to list it? That's when the problem started. And it has been reported and it has been proven that Ticketmaster employs their own scalpers um, because they want to not only monopolize the ticket selling industry, they want to monopolize the resale industry and they know that they can make so much more money on resale because a ticket that was $300 raised value, they can sell for $2,000 if they wanted to because there's no cap on resale pricing. Right now, it is going through multiple senators and through the US government and um, there's a that giant Taylor Swift lawsuit that is trying to stop tickets from being able to be resold at ridiculous prices. There's a few things that were talked about and um, one is that it can only be sold at face value and another was that um, you, like, you couldn't transfer tickets at all. I don't think you should take away transferring tickets at all because I think it's necessary for a lot of people if you buy with your friends, if you buy for somebody, if you end up not being able to go but your friend can go or if you end up not being able to go but somebody on your Instagram wants to buy it for face value, I think that should be allowed but it should be where it's illegal to sell tickets for more than face value. That would be so amazing and that would leave this scalpers that Ticketmaster employs fucking jobless as they should be um but anyways Ticketmaster are their own scalpers that's why ticketing sucks that's why it never works that's why they always get it first and they use bots and it's a whole thing you can read articles on it and what they uncovered about Ticketmaster and why they're under a lawsuit right now and um like I said this was a long time coming it should have happened last year it should have happened before that but it should have happened at least after ptd la last year that was the biggest um blunder that they had in a long time and then ptd vegas and then bad bunny tour and now taylor swift and then beyonce um those are like their biggest blunders and really showcased what they have done and the issues that ticketmaster presented um and the thing is Ticketmaster is really hard for artists to get rid of. It's really hard for consumers to get rid of because again, they monopolize the ticketing industry. And so it doesn't matter that you don't wanna use them, they dominate the entire market. In fact, say you're an artist and you know the issues with Ticketmaster. Say I'm a singer and I'm going on tour and I'm like, I don't like Ticketmaster either. I don't want them to do this to my fans. So I don't wanna use them. Well, too fucking bad because if you guys don't know, Ticketmaster slash Live Nation has contracts with almost 90% of the venues around this country. 
In the United States, most venues have a contract with Live Nation. If they don't, then they have a contract with a different ticketing company. There's a few sprinkled here and there. Um, I live in Austin, which we actually have a lot of non-Live Nation uh, ticketing because um, just because live music capital of the world front gate lives here axs lives here so here in austin that's where their offices are so but it's not common a non-live nation slash ticketmaster venue is not common and you send like when you send an artist to this venue the artist automatically has to use ticketmaster because the venue has signed a deal with ticketmaster or live nation and they cannot sell their tickets elsewhere that's why when an artist goes on tour and they have multiple um, venues and the ticketing are on different venues, it's because they're following what the venue goes to. Like a good example is Jackson Wing, where I ticketed for New York and it was on Ticketmaster, but my friend ticketed uh, for LA and it's on AXS. And why would the same artist going on the same tour have different ticketing websites? It's because it's based on the contract the venue has and most venues have contracts with Live Nation, so you don't have a choice. You can't like try to sell your tickets on your own. You can't um, try to uh, use a different ticketing website. It's whatever the venue has a contract with. And I think a really good thing that a lot of artists should do, which I know it's a hard ask for them, but like a lot of artists should do, number one, um, I do appreciate BTS and Taylor Swift on their tours did not use dynamic pricing. They opted out of dynamic pricing and it looks like Yoongi actually is also opting out. Um, if you go on Ticketmaster website and you go to ticket on that ticketing page of whoever the artist and whatever the show is, it'll say that um, it will fluctuate like these prices will fluctuate based on demand and that means they're using dynamic pricing. I didn't see that on any of the pages for Yoongi so maybe he's opting out like BTS but um, BTS opted out, Taylor Swift opted out and I think that is such an important thing to do as an artist. Um, I know none of these artists are going to be listening to me and what I think they should do but um, I think opting out of dynamic pricing is such an important step and I think it's something that they all should do as well as not allow tickets being sold over face value. Paramore did a wonderful job about, uh, of this. This is the only artist that I have seen do this and Paramore went and they um, made sure that tickets cannot be resold on Ticketmaster for more than face value. So if you bought a ticket say you can't go anymore you can list it on face va uh, for face value on the Ticketmaster website on their resale page but you can't list it for any more than that and i think that is so amazing i feel like that should be a thing for any resale website across the board so um yeah i think that's a great idea in my personal opinion and then um also i've never seen any other artists do that so i don't know how we can urge them to, but I have never seen any other artists do that. I did see Muna, again, one of my favorite artists, so I pay attention to them, but um, they canceled tickets that were bought by scalpers, and they they basically found the tickets that the scalpers were um, using to sell for like double, triple the price on the websites that they bought it on, and they canceled those tickets and put them back out for fans. So I thought that was really cool too. A lot of artists are trying to take action because it's really ruining the ticket buying experience and as a fan you know this is important to you and it just it's such like a bummer and puts a lot of people in really hard situations um at the end of the day besides everything wrong with Ticketmaster ticket prices are crazy like the bottom line is ticket prices are crazy whether it's dynamic pricing or face value or resale tickets are expensive they're more expensive than they used to be and it's a lot of money and investment to go to a concert i definitely don't think you should like go into any debt or put yourself in a bad situation to go see a show but ultimately you have to decide if spending that kind of money is worth it i don't think I'll ever be able to explain 
why I spend so much money on shows and why I spend so much money on travel to somebody who does not know what that feels like and to somebody who is not a fan. I really wish that every single person in the entire world gets to experience what it's like to be a fan because I think it's such like an important thing. Also, number one, I love art. One of the art that like art, I don't know how to explain it. Like one of the things that I love the most about art is that there's just people that create it. That's so cool that like somebody creates art and then people consume it. I think that is just so cool. And music is one of my favorite types of art. And for me, it's not just being like a fan of that person, it's being a fan of their artwork and the, their ability to create it. And a lot of times people connect to music in crazy ways and it's so good for your mental health. It's been proven to be. And unless that is your vice, unless that is your outlet, unless that is something that you're passionate about, I don't think I could explain it. But I hope and I wish for every single person watching this that you're a fan of something because being a fan is such a wonderful experience. Being a fan feels so whole and also I truly believe my grandpa always told me that it's really important to pour love into the world and I think one of the ways that I pour love the most is being a fan and it's not just to that person but it's to like the art itself i think the most important part is the art itself and music um i also really like visual art i like a lot of things like books and i like um theater and i like there's a lot of things that i like that is art and i pour my love into those things because i think it's so important too i think it's so important to love something that much even though you're like it's just a thing like it's so important to me and I think that it's like it's unexplainable unless you know what it's like to be a fan it's so unexplainable and that's why I think every single person needs to assess with themselves if that's you if that's if you have that kind of love for that thing which is concerts and if it's worth it to you because you have to decide and the conclusion of this all is that we need to take Ticketmaster down uh, abolish Ticketmaster, take the whole thing down. They are awful. They are awful. Also, Live Nation. Um, how about you pay your employees a living wage? Um, I mean, they're not paying them like below minimum wage, but they don't pay their employees enough. And that's a whole different video that I could make. I keep saying that in this video, like a lot of things are a whole different video I can make, but literally I could. I have a lot of opinions about a lot of things and I just talk a lot, but yeah. So fuck Ticketmaster, I hope you die. Okay, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.